In this video I wanted to take a look at the Guarantee building in Buffalo, or the Prudential building. Um, we're going to have a, a brief look at the architects involved as well. And if you're familiar with my channel, we look at it in the light of there being some sort of uh, deception going on with the historical narrative. Uh, so we're just going to try and point out some of the uh, thin areas of the narrative, let's say. So first I want to uh, quickly pull out some of the highlights. So this building apparently went up or completed in 1896. I did scroll through this page and I found no um, no word of the construction whatsoever, the start date or anything like that. All we're given is a completion date of 1896. Um, built by Louis Sullivan, Dankmer Adler. Actually these gentlemen looking very similar. Um, sort of an interesting story the uh, brainchild of this Haskell T Taylor uh, gentleman died before it could be um, completed the guarantee construction company was the ones apparently contracted with the, with building it I looked that company up and found nothing so that's a dead end as far as uh, as information goes um, and they do make some comparisons here to a few other buildings. They also mention some of the buildings in the surrounding area. You have the County and City Hall. Spectacular. Uh, the Ellicott Square building. Very similar with the arches and um, ornate decoration around the um, cornice of the building. Uh, let's see here. And you have a couple architects um, come up, and they're the usual suspects. These one, these I think what's happened here is if um, these gentlemen like Burnham and Sullivan have been uh, attributed with the construction or the design, I should say, because the construction is always overlooked um, of many of these buildings. So in this video, we're just going to look at this one um, building. So, uh, there's also an interesting little blurb here. They're talking about um, um, electricity, hydroelectricity, and that the building itself was constructed constructed um, in 1896, and then the power was sent to Buffalo after that. So um, th there we have a date to when uh, power power became a thing in uh, in Buffalo. And there's a few more things I'd like to point out before we get to some of the visuals. Um, this one apparently is steel frame construction, and then terracotta. Um, blocks or bricks um, make up the uh, visual elements that we're going to be taking a closer look at. Um, there's a little blurb here about the uh, World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago 1893 and that Sullivan was was the only American to win a design medal um, because it was non-classically inspired his design. It's simpler apparently they're saying than the uh, classical design of the World's Fair. So th there's a sort of a denigration there of the splendor of the Chicago World's Fair built into this narrative, as they like to do. Um, they also mentioned comparison with the Wainwright Building. We're going to take a look at a photograph of the Wainwright Building, also built or uh, designed by these two gentlemen. Um, it's, it's in St. Louis. And like I said, you can go through this, and they don't—they don't even mention the construction. They just get to modern day. So let's look at some of the visuals. Here we have the two gentlemen, uh, looking very similar. Like I mentioned, uh, not a lot of photographs of these gentlemen. You can really count the number of photographs on one hand. Um, this supposedly uh, Sullivan over the years. Um, in my eyes, this looking like four different people. Especially from here to here, you see. Uh, quite a difference and that's really not that many years apart so a little suspect a lot of suspect here he is he really is the uh, father of the skyscraper they call him prophet of modern architecture wow they're really raining down praise you think there'd be more photographs of this gentleman online and this would be Adler one of the few okay now we get to the building itself so we're in the heart of Buffalo um, right away this jumps out at me the, uh, the symmetry here perfection and symmetry here we have a supposed construction photo I say supposed because I cast many doubts upon whether 
um, whenever we see these grid patterns um, in these old photos. I think there's been some tampering going on. I don't know, I don't trust them. And then I have one here of the Wainwright. This is the Wainwright building I mentioned previously. Um, apparently this is a construction photo of the Wainwright and I, I put it in here because I want you to see does this upper section look the same as the lower section? Are we looking at a drawing here? To me this looks penciled in. And I think the same funny business goes on. Um, well, it, I think it's widespread in a lot of these older photos. Giving us a sense of false historical narrative. I think it's an elaborate, elaborate um, um, deception. Very elaborate. And here we see it in the background behind the Erie County Savings Bank. Uh, this building, really something else, was demolished. I'll do a video on that one day as well. Now we get to some of the uh, colorized detail. This should really give you a sense of this is what the terracotta. Um, the showing you the finish, right? So this is apparently a steel frame structure and then it was just sort of filled in um, with these pieces of terracotta. And remember, we don't have a timeline. We really have a, we don't have a start date. We only have a finish date. But this, these, these pictures I bring you to give you a sense of uh, the, uh, I don't know, the difficulty, the beauty going on uh, inside and outside the building. We, look, you have mosaics on the ceiling. And you have all of this uh, light work and remember electricity um, not really uh, a large part of uh, Buffalo according to our narrative I say um, because these look like they're all part of the uh, the original building and it was a part of the the world at the time I would suggest this is this is quite spectacular too I don't know if, if you get a sense of uh, the detail on a lot of these as you look at these and you can see that they are a terracotta pattern, but the, the uh, I don't know, the level of uh, precision in the construction of these. And we're to expect that this was, uh, this was commonplace uh, at the time, given the details of our historical narrative. Um, like, I, I contend that, yeah, these, of course these buildings were, were built. I don't know exactly when. Um, but my contention is that uh, we don't have the full story on the, what the means they had to construct these buildings and the technology um, available to them. And here's uh, the front railing. Those spectacular lights again, and this, this really giving you a good. Uh, good visual of the uh, terracotta pattern this is the upper section we'll see some more detailed photos of that but this is actually what drew me into taking a closer look at this uh, building and there's I guess they're doing some touch-up work here um, so this modern day in picture even attempting something like this modern day look at look at the angles of the different pieces of the terracotta and uh, again we have to try and go back in time 130 years and uh, assume that this was just uh, no big deal all you needed really was an architect who could draw it up and apparently they would just send the drawings to the manufacturer and the manufacturer could pump out all of these different little pieces and number them and then they could send those to the builder on the horse and buggy or on the on a train car and all they have to do is follow the number pattern. It's easy. Any any old idiot could do it. Any any construction worker could do it. They just have to follow the pattern. Is that the assumption we're working under here? But really, take a look at this. I don't know. If you can't if you can't smell the rat, I can't do much for you. Really, this is something stinks. And it certainly isn't the building. There, and there are very few shots of the inside. Um, and for such a large building, you know, and, and you see this, this is a common theme as well. You see uh, these buildings that are basically glorified um, as uh, feats of architecture. Here you have again the uh, marble stone uh, mosaic tile ceiling. And then I expect in a search on YouTube to see all these uh, 
these tours. <laughs> like like you'd be able to go through and, and marvel at the building, and it's there's a secretive element of uh, of uh, okay, we'll show you the lobby. Oh, we'll show you this room, and maybe one other place, and you don't get to see any more of the building. So I hope you can understand how my trust is uh, not earned with that type of secrecy. I don't really feel I don't have a lot, lot of love for secrecy. I don't think it helps anything. This I love too. This is an old, old one of Buffalo. We have a date on this photograph of 1911, and what struck me is the uh, the growth here on the church um, of all the vine work, and then we see on the previous uh, construction photo. So this would be obviously 1896. Um, what 16 years previous to that other photo? And we've got a a clean church with nothing growing on it. So. I don't know. Something doesn't work for me, as far as that goes. And then you could say it's fast-growing um, vines or whatever, and that's possible. But it just, I don't know. It smells funny. All right, so we have another shot, and again, mosaic tiles. How long does that take? I don't know. I don't think they factored in. They didn't really give us. They don't give us a timeline on the build anyway. So I don't know. Are we supposed to assume that however many years we're supposed to work back from 1896? this giving you an idea as well. I think of the difficulty in, uh, in placing all this stuff and the precision needed to make it all work. Even the thickness of, of the, uh, the seams or the grout lines between all these little uh, pieces. Um, you would have to be pretty accurate. There's that ceiling. Not, I know some of these are a bit grainy. There's not a ton of pictures on this place but really sort of uh, stopped me dead in my tracks when I when I came across this and I wanted to share it. And then from afar, from a po uh, postcard like I've mentioned um, in other videos, these don't look like much because you don't see the detail, you don't get the level of detail, but then when you get uh, these close-ups of some of the buildings that still stand, you realize how much has gone into how much detail was put into these. This is, this is giving you a really good idea of the different parts that make up the arches. And then the three dimensionality of it as well. Right. It's uh, trying to wrap my head around it, of uh, how, we, how one would go about doing this. Right. And then you have to, uh, to factor in the fact that you're how many stories off the ground. Hmm. I don't know. Didn't sit right with me. Look at this too. I love the way that these are molded. Love the old light fixtures. The old world light fixtures are something special. This would be that ceiling. So we have a bit of what a stained glass type look. I don't know if I have the right term for that, but mosaic glass. It's an old photo just to show that it was like that a long time ago. The elevator lobby this would be, right? Okay. So this is a little taste of uh, Sullivan's work. All right, here he is. How strange it seems that education in practice so often means suppression. So instead of leading the mind outward to the light of day, it crowds things in upon it that darken and weary it. And I'll close with this. So this is uh, a group of architects that are basically have been handed all of these different buildings, which I do suggest existed as part of an old world civilization. And we are just being given faces and names and when you put the when you do the math on the number of buildings that these uh, individuals are attributed to the bottom falls out of of the narrative in a hurry and then you realize how thin the narrative is how few photos we see of these people strange stories no construction companies um so this is just another hole in the narrative thanks for watching